Thank you, Dr. Tuk Vu. I want to, uh, once again, uh, congratulations to the success of uh, the AI Grand Challenge. I was lucky enough to join, and then it was a wonderful experience. Our next talk will discuss about a very interesting and challenging topic, deep learning. Despite much success, deep learning generally does not perform well with small label training sets. Making use of unlabeled data to improve deep learning has been an important research direction. Dr. Tang Leung, senior research scientist of Google Brain, will present his team latest finding in unsupervised data augmentation, UDA, an answer to this problem of data scarcity with the topic, Advances in Semi-Supervised Learning, How to Train AI with Little Label Data. Please welcome on stage Dr. Mr. Tang Leung. Hello everyone. Okay, welcome back. So uh, this talk will be a little bit technical, so I hope people don't fall asleep. But at the, let's get started. But uh, the first half would be uh, less technical, so hopefully everyone can get on the same page. So advances in semi-supervised learning. But let me get started by just telling you the basic first. So let's talk about just basic supervised learning. So in case people don't know, in uh, machine learning, I mean, if you, uh, if, you know, if you tell your friends you know supervised learning, maybe they will be surprised. So let me just give you some idea what does supervised learning mean. So if you have an image, this is your input, and then you have a, a label, which is a cat, and supervised learning always requires input and label. So you teach the, the AI to learn how to recognize an image, whether this is a cat or a dot, so this is a picture of how neural networks work. So neural network is a new technology or deep learning that is inspired by the hu uh, human brain. So what you see here is a picture of many layers. And these are like neurons, the little dot, they connect it. And uh, the goal of neural network is just, you know, by just looking at lots of lots of images like this, you know, you have image of cat, image of dog, you know, any animals. And it will figure out, you know, by going up here, if it classifies it's the dark, it's wrong, it will, you know, adjust the weight, and then gradually, as you see more and more images, it can learn to classify correctly. So in the real world situations, a lot of the time, you only have little data. You have just maybe a small amount of, you know, label data. For example, in healthcare, you don't always have lots of label data you know, where you need people to look at the data, to annotate it, it's very costly. But on the contrary, you have a lot of unlabeled data. You know, you can have lots of different cats, but no one tells you these are the cats. You know, you can see a lot of these pictures on the internet. So, so recently, Andrew Ng at uh, Amazon event also talked about the importance of going from big data into small data. I think a lot of people talk about big data, right? But I think um, techniques for, that work on small data is also very important. Let me give you an example. So Andrew Ng worked on you know, manufacturing, helping worker to decide whether you know, your phone is OK or if there's a scratch on your phone. But a lot of the time, you don't have the label of like strategy relationship between supervised learning and semi-supervised learning. And then the axis here is like how much label data you have. So when you have little data, semi-supervised learning works very well, work better than supervised learning. But it's not that good. It's just like it's, the performance is like still very low. And then by the time you get more and more data, it just, it just simply like better to use supervised learning because it's simpler. But then recently, there's a metric where the curve of semi-supervised learning actually go above when you have a bit more data. And um, someone called this one acquires semi-supervised learning revolutions. And uh, they mentioned our work here. So it's actually just this year. We, um, this is our work, and also this is our college work. So the idea is about you know, utilizing lots of label, a lot of unlabeled data but you make them, you just add in some noise, so the system more robust to, to the noise added to the uh, examples. 
So this is the work by um, me, uh, Quark, and a, an other colleagues at Google Brand. And the work is called Unsupervised Data Augmentation for Consistency Training. And, um, oops, oh yeah, I forgot. Oh, this is, uh, <laughs> I think this is just copy and paste. Uh, this is Jesus here. This is Zhu Handai, Ed Hovi there from CMU, and me and Quark. Sorry about this, uh, not for Tang Lung. I guess uh, by now maybe people start to fall asleep. Um, I'm going to go very quickly through the remaining part, which is a little bit more technical. So let me give you what, the, what is consistency training in semi-supervised learning. So on the left part here, you have label data, you know, like image of a cat and the label cat. And you build a model. This is the, they have the kind of supervised cross entropy loss. And when you have a lot of unlabeled data, what you're going to do is you add a little bit of noise to your input data. So you get a little different image. It's still the same, but you know, sometimes you rotate the image, you add some, you increase the background color to make it brighter. And then you run the same model through each of the input so that you get the prediction for each of the image. And then the consistency loss is to say that, okay, the prediction for these two images should be the same. So by doing the consistency training, people want to make sure that, you know, when you add a little bit of noise to your input data, the system is still robust. And by doing that, the model can learn to propagate the label from, un from label data into unlabeled examples. And uh, I won't go into details of this picture, but just to give you a sense, you know, like the color dot here, uh, label example, and then the uncolored ones are unlabeled example. So at first, the model sort of, you know, re infer that those around the label example are the same class, but they still make mistakes, and they still like uh, tangle together. And as you keep going, you know, they fix the error here, and then it gets better and better over time. And you can do that because you have the kind of consistency loss here where you sort of, okay, you take like an, an image, you, like, like you change them a little bit, and then the model will learn to you know, connect um, different images together. So for UDA, what we did differently, actually are very simple changes. Instead of adding the noise, we add a, a better noise, better kinds of noise. We add like augmentations method to change our input. So what do I mean by augmentation? So let me give you an example. Um, okay. So, so for example, for language, if you have a sentence, like an input, what you do is you translate to French, and then you translate back into English, and then now you have a new sentence. For example, if you have the sentence, like given the low budget and product limitation, this movie is very good, when you change it, you have a new sentence like there are few budget items and production limitations to make this film a really good one. So you know that the language is a bit different, but it still has similar meaning. And this is how we actually manipulate our input so that the model gets to be more robust to the, ch the input changes. And for vision, what we do is we run a technique called random augment, where it just try different ways of changing your input. You know, it can crop an image, it can rotate, it can zoom in, it can add different color. So from an unlabeled example, you get other unlabeled example, and then the model will learn to make similar prediction between the example. And by doing that, we was able to get state-of-the-art performance for language application with just 20 example. And um, this is better than technique that use like, you know, 20,000 example, uh, much more data than what we have. And um, what you can see here, the curve here is semi-supervised learning, the blue curve, and the gray curve is the supervised learning. And we're actually always ahead of the supervised learning curve. And this agree with what you see before in the, in the article about the quiet revolution of semi-supervised learning. And for vision as well, I won't go into details, but you will see that 
our model UDA was able to outperform existing um, techniques by a huge amount of, uh, by 30 percent. And uh, we can get very good performance by only use like 4,000 examples compared to a system that use like, you know, 50,000 examples. So this is like 10 times less data. So in summary, I think it's important to think about the transition from big data into small data, I think as Andrew and Book put it. And you know, this is important in manufacturing, in healthcare, and I think I'm sure there's a lot of other you know, areas that you, you might think about. And so my supervised learning is getting better and better. And uh, I think UDA is one approach, and um, I'm sure there will be more and more improvements. Okay, thank you. <laughs>